You guys know I love caking anything with a nub. You know I love caking things that are edible. So I'm gonna give you a clue as to what I made this week. And the clue is that I absolutely squashed these cakes. Not your, not your best pun, but okay. It's not? I don't know, let's just squash this argument. Uh -huh. Before it starts. So, I decided to bake three different squashes. I caked a banana squash, an acorn squash, and a kombucha squash. I hope I'm saying that right. A kombucha squash. And you know what? Orhan, the whole time I was making these cakes, I was like, why did we pick the kombucha squash? The kombucha was definitely the hardest. I better, can I just make sure I'm saying that right? I'm gonna ask Google, how do you say kombucha squash? Kabaka. Oh, kabaka. Kabaka. I love this. Okay, so I thought the perfect cakes to bake were my pumpkin spice recipe, which is Orhan's favorite, and my gingerbread recipe. I decided that my acorn squash and my kabaka squash are going to be the pumpkin spice. So for the kabaka squash, I baked my pumpkin spice cake in two eight inch round pans, and for the acorn squash, I baked the same batter in a five inch sphere pan, in two halves of the sphere pan. And now for my butter nut squash, I'm going to bake my gingerbread cake batter in one of my egg pans. I don't know why I'm doing this. With the two eight inch round cakes, I decided not to level them because the nice little hump is gonna work in my favor when I'm carving the kabucha squash. So I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other. Now I'm gonna begin by just carving off the top edge all the way around and then I'm gonna flip my cake over and do the same thing. Just recreate the shape of the kabucha squash. And on top in the center, I'm just gonna carve a little bit away where the nub will go. I can't believe I get to make three nubs in one video. This is the ultimate nub day. So now I've carved the, how do I say it again? Kabacha? Let's listen again. Kabaka. Kabaka. Who would have thought? I would have never thought there was anything that rhymed with Chewbacca. So I'm very happy with the shape of my Kubaka squash. Kabaka squash? Kuba Why can't I remember? <laughs> Kabaka. I'm happy with the shape of the kabaka squash, but I do think it needs some imperfections. This goes against every fiber in me, but it's a little too perfectly shaped, so I'm just gonna use a small serrated knife and um, you know, make one side a little bit flatter, cut out a couple of indents to just make it not so symmetrical. I've carved the kabaka squash. What I wanna do is layer it. So I'm just gonna pull the first top layer off and layer each one into two layers. And now I'm gonna move on to my acorn squash. The first thing I wanna do is put the sphere together as one. And I kind of wanna carve it more like the shape of an egg. Cause the acorn squash is not perfectly round, it's more tapered at the top. So I'm just gonna take my knife and taper the top end of it so it looks more like an egg. Once I'm done, I'm going to separate the two halves and I'm gonna to begin to carve indents all around the side, almost like an accordion or like a Reese peanut butter cup. It's nature's Reese peanut butter cup. This is another reason why the acorn squash is like the pretty one. We should have had like a squash pageant. Can you just fix your t-shirt? My t-shirt wasn't straight, everybody. <laughs> I'm apparently in a pageant. So now I'm starting to do <laughs> the like the indents along the side and they are all along the side, but they're not perfectly evenly spaced. So if they're technically, you know, nature formed them. So I'm gonna use my knife and start to carve them into the side and continue that carve up and down, like vertically along the squash. This one, I'm not gonna cut into more layers because it's so small and I don't want it to become volatile. So I'm good with just two cake layers. This is Akon and this, <laughs> this is an acorn squash. See, see, it's not the same. Okay, they're both cool, but like, have nothing to do with each other. I hope Akon doesn't watch on a cake. Now I'm gonna move on to the butternut squash. Once the cakes are out of the pan, I'm going to level them further, but I do this upside down whenever the pan is a sphere. So I put the flat part down that I already pre-leveled. And then just like leveling, I use the ruler and the serrated knife to mark all the way around. And I cut off that top layer, but with the cake upside down as opposed to right side up. You know I love templates, but instead of cutting out a template that's the shape of a butternut squash, I used the butternut squash, an actual butternut squash, as my template. 
So I just like held it on top of one half of the sphere of the egg pan and then I just traced, ran my knife along the butternut squash. I just, I'm living. You know what I'm saying? I'm not turning down exciting opportunities. Some people bungee jump. I use butternut squashes as a template. I've, now I have the shape. I've cut that excess away from my cake. I'm gonna continue to sort of round down the sides, round the top, and then the butternut squash has like a waist. It's bulbous and then there's an indent and then it's even more bulbous, so I'm working on that. And then I put the other half with it and I sort of continue shaping the butternut squash and carving the other half the same way I carved the first half. And now I'm gonna hold them together and have a look. And just like any cake, if you're not happy, this is the time to keep carving little by little until you are happy. This one too, I'm not gonna cut into more layers. It's just gonna be the two halves. But once I carved it, I realized something. This reminds me of a cartoon I was obsessed with when I was a kid. And it's actually, um, I think it was a scandi I think it was a Swedish cartoon and it's called Barbara Papa. And the whole family were these like colorful characters in the shape of butternut squashes. <laughs> Barbara Papa, I went back in time. Okay, that's all I have to say. So now it's time for Lil Squeeze to help me simple syrup all these cakes. So now that all of the simple syrup has soaked in, it is time to fill and stack these cakes with Italian meringue buttercream. I'm gonna let the cake shine here because both cake recipes have a lot of really nice spices in them and I want that to come out. Once I'm done filling and stacking the cakes, it is time to crumb coat them. So I crumb coat the butternut squash and the acorn squash. Getting in all those grooves was a lot of fun. But the kabaka, kabaka, kabaka. But the kabaka squash, because the pumpkin spice cake is so tender and because I had four layers, I noticed that after I filled the cake, it was sort of pushing down and the shape was changing. So I'm not gonna crumb coat it yet. I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill so I can just carve it a little more before I crumb coat. And now I'll crumb coat and chill that cake as well. It's time to ice all three cakes with more Italian rank buttercream. And I'm going to use my invention, which I didn't invent at all. It's just a square piece of acetate. And it really helps when you're icing something with natural curves or anything that's like a sphere. It really, really helps because you can bend it between your fingers and keep all that curve that you carved. Now it is time to cover each one of these cakes with fondant in the appropriate color. For the kabuka squash, I have to say, no, kabuka? Kabaka, <laughs> oh my god. So the kabaka squash, I must say, I made one of the ugliest colors of fondant I've ever made. Like I never want to use this color again. And often when I'm making like a color that's just, I'll try to use a lot of the leftover pieces of fondant I have. So I had some like lime green fondant, I had a bit of white, I had some brown. I'll mix those all together and then as well as use gel colors to achieve whatever color I want. So I made the kabaka squash color. Now for the butternut squash, it's like a weird sort of ivory, but it's peachy. So I used peach and ivory to create this color. All the while I kept my squashes close like models uh, so I could compare. And because I'm gonna paint these, we want to achieve a color in our fondant that looks like the base. It will be further enhanced when we paint these squashes. For the acorn squash, this one was tricky because you can see it's predominantly a nice sort of forest green, but then it has these orange patches that are like really, or like this is more orange than a pumpkin. This is bright. So what I did is I mixed together yellow and red fondant to get that orange. But I knew that if I covered it in green fondant, it would be very hard to get this part, this bright orange with all that dark green underneath because it would read through. Now I'm going to cover these cakes. So basically it's really important to always measure your cakes so that you can roll your fondant larger than your cake. You want the fondant to drape completely over and you wanna have enough excess at the bottom. And what's most important is smoothing it into all those grooves around the acorn squash, tucking it under and cutting away the excess fondant. We're gonna cover the butternut squash and same thing, roll out your fondant larger than your cake, drape it over, smooth it onto the butternut squash and you wanna try and get all the air out from between the fondant and the cake and press it downward and then tuck the rest of your fondant in and cut away the excess. 
now we can cover the kabaka squash. Ugliest fondant in the world. I actually said to Changas, we should sell a pack of the ugliest fondant colors. And I think kabaka needs to make it in because <laughs> this is record breakingly ugly. Now we're moving on to the fun part. It's time to paint these cakes. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the acorn squash. First thing I wanna do on the acorn squash is create like an outline of where I want this, like this patch of orange, because the whole squash is orange at this point. For this, I'm gonna use a makeup sponge. I'm like a makeup YouTuber. You know what I mean? But I still look the same in my before and after. <laughs> but my cakes look very different. So I use my makeup sponge to dab on the green paint. And I'm gonna make two orange patches on my cake because I never know how it will turn out. So I might decide this is the front and in the end I like the back better. So I create those patches and now I start to brush it all over the cake, avoiding the patch. I realized that it looked too dark. It actually almost looked black. So then I used a dry brush to start removing the paint. And I really liked this because it gave it more texture. It wasn't completely flat. And I'm really happy with this acorn squash. I'm gonna leave it for now, put it in the fridge, and I'm gonna move on to the butternut squash. I'm using a combination, ooh, big news on how to cake it. You guys know I love ivory, but for years, you've seen me using the same ivory food coating. But I used my Celebakes ivory for the first time because I've been using their colors, but I hadn't used ivory. Oh, it it's amazing. It's yeah. gorgeous. I found a new ivory. I mix together ivory and white. So once I'm happy with the color, I paint it over the whole surface. Keeping in mind, I want to paint from like the top where the nub will be down to the bottom of the squash. It was simple to paint. It was harder to just get the right shade, but it's completely simple to paint. There's no patches, there's no speckling, there's nothing. There's just butternut squashiness. Now, I move on to the kabaka squash. Kabaka squash. The kabaka squash. It is not simple to paint. I have to build this paint in layers and it's a really difficult shade of green. So the first layer, I use taupe and fog and green to paint the base over this already sort of dull green fondant. Now I'm gonna mix together a couple of dark greens. I have a leaf green and a holiday green and then I'm gonna paint that over top that opaque layer. The next thing I need to do is create the speckles on the squash. On the kabaka squash, the speckles are lighter, which means I need to scrape away areas of the darker paint to reveal that lighter base paint underneath. So I'm gonna use a few sculpting tools to do that, and I'm just gonna start to scrape away the paint. The other thing I need to do is work on creating the indents in the squash. This has a few indents, and they seem to be deeper at the bottom of the squash than the top, and normally I create indents before painting. The reason I did it backward or in the opposite direction this time is for the same reason as the scraping because as I create the indents with my ball tool, it will scrape away that top layer of paint and reveal the lighter paint underneath. I still feel like the squash is far brighter than the real squash. The other problem was it was too shiny. So now what I'm going to do is use some dry paint to make it a lot more matte. For this, I'm gonna use a mixture of ivory color dust, black color dust, and I'm gonna mix it with some icing sugar. I wish I had cornstarch. I ran out of cornstarch, because cornstarch would be amazing at absorbing moisture, but I'll use icing sugar, and I'm using a dry brush, and I'm just basically dabbing on a lot and then brushing it away. You know that they do this, like a, a lot of YouTube makeup artists do this, and they, it's actually called caking. To set the makeup, they'll like pack on all this powder and then leave it for a bit so that it sticks to the makeup on your face and then they'll dust away everything else and that's what I'm doing to this cake. So technically I'm Baking. taking a cake. I felt like the veins I created or the indents I created weren't noticeable enough so I'm going to get a little bit of white paint with a little bit of fog and a touch of green and repaint those veins. Basically I just keep adding layers to this cake until I'm happy. So if you need to let it dry in between, if you need to go back and scrape away more paint or paint the indents a little more, just take your time. So we're at my favorite part. The reason I made these cakes, like the cherry on top, the nubs. You shouldn't even say cherry on top. When something happens that you would say cherry on top, you should say that. The nub on top, you're right. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. 
I'm gonna do that from now on. So to make the nubs, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my extra kabaka squash ugly green fondant and my extra butternut squash fondant and mix a bit together. Now, you know what I noticed that all these squashes had in common? The nubs have like five points at the base. So the base of the nub is almost always like a star. So they all had that in common, but otherwise the nubs are a little bit different. Now I'm gonna paint my nubs and I'm just using a combination of wet and dry paints. And you really just wanna make sure that you can see the difference in the top and the sides and have it match each squash. Guys, I'm having a fall sale on my website, so check it out. If you wanna get a head start on your holiday shopping or you just wanna get some baking stuff for yourself, make sure to check out the link below. Okay, there you guys have it. I think I squashed these cakes. Can't get enough cake? Let me squash that problem for you. Click right here. <laughs>